It's estimated the uh, Michigan businesses are going to be eligible to apply for about $78 million under the new law, and this news is apparently sending a, a Republican Party chair, Ron Weiser, into a small conniption on the other end of our line. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Is this uh, an important step for small businesses, or is it another bailout? Well, it's hard to tell. These are complicated bills. Uh, the problem right now with banks is you have uh, administration and the Fed telling banks that they should be lending money to businesses, and you have the regulators telling the banks to lend it to businesses that don't need the money. So, you know, until we get past that problem, I think we're going to have a real problem with credit uh, being being shut down. I mean, $78 million is nice, but that's just a small fraction of what's necessary to, to get business going here in this state. Um, isn't part of the problem that, uh, let's say uh, I want to hire someone for $40,000, I've got to collect... 55000 in order to see them through all of the extras and the health care and the rest of it. And aren't uh, small business people holding on to their money right now because they don't really know their tax burden at the moment after January 1st? Well, I mean, it's more than the tax burden. They're uncertain about the economy. And, mm -hmm. and that's what the election in Michigan is all about. Is I mean, nobody knows the direction of this economy in Michigan. Is it going to continue to go down or is it going to turn around? And I think that's why... Uh, it's going to be such an important election. I know that you're a young man, but uh, did you ever meet? Uh, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever meet Ronald Reagan? I did. What was that like? Uh, well, he was an extraordinary person. He just had a presence about him that uh, made you. He just exuded confidence. I mean, you, when you were around him, you you felt as if he if he had the answers and what he was saying that. It, it must be right. I mean, he, when he came in, and maybe you don't remember this, I mean, our country was in one of the worst conditions that it ever had been in. I mean, we had hyperinflation and, and recession going on at the same time, and and he got people to believe in themselves again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's, that's the kind of leadership we need. We don't have it in Washington. We don't have it in Lansing. And I think that's why this election is going to bring about huge changes in in the, in the people who are going to be leading us going forward. You know, it's funny that you allude to uh, would I remember the Reagan era and the Carter era because I'm 43 years old, and the way that I learned a lot when I was in the 6th and 7th grade is I had a paper route in Detroit. And uh, every day I would deliver the papers, and I read the front page 8 million times because, you know, walking in between houses was a little dull, so I read about the Iran hostage crisis, and I ran about the gas shortage, and, I, you know, I was aware of what was going on at a young age simply because I was exposed to the print media for whatever it was, 80 houses a morning, you know, with the, with the Detroit News or Free Press. Um, however, let me take you back down memory lane just for a minute here. This is the old Ronald Reagan Morning in America spot that uh, appeared during his re-election campaign. And if you'll just uh, listen to this, and then I'll have a drop the other shoe on you. It's morning again in America. Today, more men and women will go to work than ever before in our country's history with interest rates at about half the record highs of 1980. Nearly 2,000 families today will buy new homes, more than at any time in the past four years. This afternoon, 6,500 young men and women will be married. And with inflation at less than half of what it was just four years ago, they can look forward with confidence to the future. It's morning again in America. And under the leadership of President Reagan, our country is prouder and stronger and better. Why would we ever want to return to where we were less than four short years ago? Okay, that uh, has you feeling nostalgic, I would think, this morning. Uh, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> now let me drop the other shoe. The New York Times was talking about a YouTube video now, a 60-second spot. Morning in America, Ronald Reagan spot, M-O-R-N-I-N-G. This one is called Morning in America, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, and here it is. There's morning in America. Today, 15 million men and women won't have the opportunity to go to work. Business is shuttered. 2,900 families will have their homes foreclosed by nightfall. This afternoon, 6,000 men and women will be married, each of their children to be born, 
with a $30,000 share of the runaway national debt. Our government is now taking over the choices we once made in life. There's mourning in America. Under the leadership of President Obama, our country is fading and weaker and worse off. His policies were a grand experiment, policies that failed. This November, let's choose a smaller, more caring government, one that remembers us. Pretty stinging endorse, uh, pretty stinging indictment there, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and there's, uh, this reminds, <laughs> where we are right now reminds me of where we are just before Ronald Reagan's first election. Uh, you played a, you played a spot just before his second election. Yeah. Things had turned around considerably, and it does show that the country can change and change rapidly in a positive way. There is discontent, we understand now, in the latest uh, Politico George Washington University poll. I've been talking about it for a couple of days. Only 38% of people asked say that uh, President Obama deserves to be reelected. Uh, that, uh, as we head into midterm elections, has got to be tough news for the Democrats. And I see yesterday the president was out campaigning. He's in campaign mode all over again. Well, I mean, that's, that's what his job is, is is trying to keep people that are going to support the policies that he has. He has more. I mean, he, he has cap and trade, which will raise the cost for every American family. He has he has card check, which uh, will take uh, make make it uh, take away the, the right to secret ballot and for uh, unionization. I mean, there's a lot of things on his agenda still, and he's trying to keep a majority in the in the Congress. All right. Well, we will uh, be in touch again soon. Thank you very much. That's Republican Party Chair Ron Weiser, who uh, we call the ambassador because he was the United States ambassador to uh, Croatia. If I'm not, was it Croatia? Yeah, I have to check it. It's somewhere in the Eastern European bloc.